Hello. Okay, so we're going to be coaching talkers today. Um, and this is Kacho Kuda. This is his account. Obviously, to give you guys context, who is talkers? Obviously, there's some like non-Brazilians here as well, right? A bunch of you guys are non-Brazilians. Talkers is a, a is a legend within the Brazilian scene. He's considered one of the best mids that ever played there. Um, he worked as a pro player as in mid lane. He also coached and played Valorant as well. Um, and as you can see, he had this extremely long, successful run um, in CB LOL under INTZ and also one under Red Cannons, right? So even up until 2017, 2018, he would, he would still be easily considered a top three mid laner. Um, he was best known for uh, beating EDG at Worlds. And the EDG roster was in 2015, I believe, or 2016. Um, really legendary roster with Clear Love, Pawn, Deft, and Mako. Yeah. And and yeah, so so yeah, incredible guy. Anyway, hello, hello, Inch. hello, hello, hola, hello, what's up? Uh, nothing much, man. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, so I was just uh, talking to you about uh, talking to people about you on stream. Um, okay. Is there any chance you can give a quick introduction in uh like Portuguese to to my stream as Portuguese? well? Portuguese? Yeah, yeah, it, it, to, it, to my stream as well, because there's a lot of Brazilians here too. Um, but maybe there are some like young girl guys or some new people, you know. I think it'd be good. Oh, ok. Eu pedi pra fazer uma introdução, né, mano? Pra quem não sabe, eu joguei com Revolta, tá? Foi uma bosta, mas nós ganhamos campeonato. Graças a Deus, velho, deu tudo certo. Ganhei 4 CBLOL, parei e agora tô aqui. É isso. E ganhei DDG também, teve essa. Acho que foi basicamente isso, né, mano? Comecei a jogar em 2014, parei em 2019. 4 CBLOL no meio do caminho. 3, 4 white card, 1 mundial. E é isso, mano. Falei que não ligo pro país. E, mano, minha história é curta, velho. Joguei Valorant, ganhei até o terceiro split. Fui pra final sem o Revolta, perdi, porque ele me trocou por dinheiro. E depois disso foi só a desgraça. Ok, I guess that's it. Ok, cool. Um, I'm not sure how many people in your stream know, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't really speak Portuguese. Um, I, know some, I know some good words, uh, but I shouldn't say them, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know some good words that uh, the streams been telling me. But basically, um, for those of you guys that don't know me on on Talker Stream, uh, my name's Coach Seal or Coach CL. I go by you know Chris Seal, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, I coached Team Heretics in the LAC this year. Coached Team Rogue last year. Uh, was a finalist in spring, won in summer. Um, was a quarter finalist at Worlds. So we lost to JG, JDG 03. Um, but it was called a final set worlds. I coached in uh, France, coached in Balkan League, coached in Oceania, North America, and um, obviously in the LEC as well. And uh, it's it's an honor to be able to coach someone like you, Toka. So thanks for making time. Appreciate it. I uh, I have to thank you. I'm kind of like a high stick master now. I I, I suck, yeah. you know. But the it's thing gonna is, it's going to be a challenge for you. The thing is, you're, I will you're make a, you a better coach. The thing is, you're a, you're a legend. You're a legend in the scene, and it's it's really fun to be able to interact with you because you you were a legend before I started. So I started league in 2018, and I started taking league seriously around like 2019, 2018. So um, you were like before me, you know. So I'd heard of your name actually because in Oceania, um, I think you beat uh, an Australian team, an Oceanic team, uh, in the wild card playoffs yeah we did. i think yeah i don't know if it was dire wolves or i don't know if it was chiefs i but, think uh, uh, did we win against chiefs i don't remember maybe both. i think we I, th i think we won against both yeah and and the guy that hired me so the guy that scouted me for the first time his name was frank lee he was the founder and and, and ceo of of the chiefs esports club he actually hired me and then sold the company so i didn't get to work with him much but he he had experience dealing with you and like obviously losing to you right so I'd, I'd, I, I knew of you, <laughs> I knew of you, um, but anyway, anyway, so yeah, uh, what we'll do is the session will last about an hour, an hour, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, we'll kind of go over uh, your, your OPGG. I'm sharing my screen. You can share that uh, with, the, oh, if wait. you want. Okay. Let me do it. And, and, and is it okay if I speak English guys? I, I'm sorry. I know that most of your chat is like Portuguese, so maybe you can translate here and there. It's quite, it's quite kind of bugged. Wait a second. No problem, Gringo. Okay, cool. So, so I'll have a look at your OPGG, kind of like talk about your strengths as a player, and then go through a couple of odds of yours and see what you could be okay. doing better. I think that's kind of our approach. And I, and I'm sure okay. you could use the help because you went to Valorant for a bit, right? 
Uh, yeah, I've been playing Valorant for like two years, I guess, and I better since I stopped playing League, I have barely like touched the game. Mm -hmm. So it's like four or five years without playing more than two games a day. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to speak a little bit slower as well because I know English is not the first language for a lot of a lot of people. Um. Anyway, can you see my screen now? Or yeah, yes, no. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, it's... cool. So. So let's start with, and by the way, if you click on the, yeah, nice. Um, let's start with what do you think your strengths as a player are? Like, what are you good at? Kind of tell me about a bit about yourself as a player because you're before my time. I, I don't actually know the details. Mm, like through my career, I I was like a control mage player, mm -hmm. but I exceed mostly like having lane pressure and kind of controlling the map, you know? Mm -hmm. I I had like a good lane phase, but my my strength was really playing playing like the vision game and like pressuring pressuring lanes, playing with the jungler. I wasn't I wasn't. Uh, I mean, let me think. I had really good results on control mage, like team fighting and stuff, farming. I was really bad at, at assassins, mm -hmm. and I was really good at roaming champions. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a VOD um, and I want to try exacerbate your strengths and, okay. and kind of help you step it up in terms of reaching new skill sets when it comes to playing Assassins. Um, the way that I like to teach the game is all evidence-based. It's all science-based. Um, I really like to break down the game into smaller, more digestible pieces of information um and create a general process for you to improve faster and you have a very good base already because you were a pro player for so long so what we'll do is we'll first start yeah. off by looking at this game this is this is a game that you played syndra versus talia matchup um good matchup for the syndra side for sure why don't you tell me a little bit about how you think about the game as you go in and kind of run me through your thought process as you're playing okay because yeah. this is this is today i think you played this i think it was yesterday yesterday okay or two days ago. It so, was like a recent game. So, so you're playing, um, you know, you're in loading screen. You see Syndra Rek'Sai on Nyla Senna. Can you tell me what you're thinking? Uh, I mean, I don't understand Briar's, like, how she's supposed to be played, mm -hmm. right? But I can imagine that Rek'Sai can probably fight her if, uh, if I have mid prior. Mm -hmm. So um, I have to look at my jungler at all times. It's pretty hard for me to get ganked, I think. Mm hmm so I can play a little bit aggressive. <laughs> so I will try to keep lane control to play around Rek'Sai and just follow, follow him, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, do you have a plan around your lane? Tell me about your lane 1v1. Yeah. Uh, Talia is going to get the push early, probably. So I will try to trade her push for her HP. Mm -hmm. So she goes, she goes for the wave. I try to trade kills. I don't even kill the wave, just kill her. And when I get to level two or three, if the wave is close to my side, she can't fight me anymore because mm -hmm. of Rek'Sai, right? Mm -hmm. So if she, she just mindless push, I can punish her by by like just freezing the wave. And if she gives the push because she's scared of ganks, I can just like get a slow push and, and do something on the map or get an early recall. Okay. Uh, and, and what do you want to base for? Like what's your kind of game plan? And when do you start winning in this matchup? Yeah. So I think I win most of the time. Mm -hmm. And but like to get the push at the control probably around level five. Okay. And the perfect back would be lock chapter. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get it, probably either I go for boot or dark seal. And when can you buy lost chapter? What do you mm -hmm. mean? When 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 will you buy lost chapter? How much gold? Uh, a thousand. Oh, I don't remember how to say numbers in English. It's been so long. 1,100? Yeah. Yeah. And how about what, what wave? What wave will you base on? Which cannon? Which wave? It, either I base at the before the cannon wave, right? At 4, but I probably wouldn't have last chapter. Oh, it's around 5.30. If I farm correctly, I probably can get it, I think. Okay. That's... that's okay. Um, I think I think maybe what you're missing right now and the difference between like older League of Legends and newer, like the, the new generation of League of Legends is there's like things have become a lot more optimized and people have become a lot more structured in the way they think. They are also very detail oriented And so kind of the way that I put it is this. 
So what you have is you have your fundamentals and you have like your mastery elements. So your fundamentals are things that apply to all games. For example, uh, mouse movement, right? Uh, camera movement, wave management, uh, like things that apply to every, every aspect of the game, including game theory. So for example, instead of saying, I should have taken an inhib here, you ask the question, when is it good to take an inhib, right? And when you talk about wave management, it's not as simple as I think I can base around 530. It's like, what wave specifically am I basing on? To summarize, to, to summarize laning phase, for me, I have four fundamentals. One is wave management. This is for lane specific, okay? Uh, the second is uh, base timer. Third is ward timer. And fourth is window usage. This is a very small part of like the overall fundamental system. When you look at the overall fundamental system, it looks something more like this, where you're really looking at physical and mental side as well. But given you're a pro player, I'll skip that. Instead of saying, I want to base at 530, what you should say is, when can I get 1100 gold? The way that you do the math is basically every wave is 125 gold. And the way that the math works is like regular minion wave, regular minion wave, cannon minion wave divided by three. That's the math behind it. And you also get... 20 gold per 10 seconds from 1 minute 50 onwards. So the math works out roughly to this. Wave 6, so second cannon, you get roughly 950 gold, right? Uh, so if you want to get lost chapter, you're basing around wave 7 or wave 8. If you get a kill, you can base a bit earlier. Why is this important? Well, on wave 9, mid laners get level 6. So the way that I like to structure my lane is if I want to base for lost chapter first, there's a lot of evidence to show that I should base around wave 7 or 8 because I'm in a winning matchup and I want to base before I'm level 6 because I want to be full HP, full mana for level 6 to threaten Talia, number 1. And number 2, I want to make sure that I have item base before I'm level 6 so I'm as strong as possible in this matchup. Does that make sense? So this is something that I'm missing yeah. first of all for your wave management. I feel like your wave management is... I feel like your wave management is very shallow. Same for your base timer and your ward timer. I think your base time is essentially just this. I would like to base on wave 7, 8. And how should you manage your wave so that you base before the third cannon? And cannons spawn every, 30, uh, every third wave, by the way, and every 30 seconds. And as for ward time, it has everything to do with jungle. So for Briar, Briar has a point and click stun, if you didn't know. He has a dash to his to an ally champion, or he can actually just dash on top of you. But it's very hard for him to get on top of you if you position correctly, because he's a melee champ, right? So it's like, can he gank level 2 or can he gank level 3? That's the question I'm asking, right? What time can Briar gank? And you need to know this. So for example, if I told you what timer can Jarvan gank, what would you say? This is a champ that can gank level 2, right? He can actually gank level 2 or yeah. level 3. Whereas if I said, what timer can, I don't know, uh, Viego gank? Can he gank level 2? I mean, in Brazilian solo kills, some do, but not really. I mean, not really, and it's trash, right? So you kind of like separate it like this, and based on this, you change the timer that you put the ward and when you put the ward. Um, so for me, Briar can gank level three, so around 240. So warding wave two as the second wave comes around 220 is ideal, right? Either left or right side, depending on where he starts. But the next thing you have to think about is, do I have push? In this matchup, I think it's impossible for Talia to have push. Talia generally has more push around level seven to nine, um, and he starts getting a lot of push after first base and uh, around level five. Um, and Talia mm -hmm. should always base before you. But in general, he should have push over you, right? Because of his yeah, Q. Yeah. So that means if I don't have push level one, why don't you use your trinket at level one? What is the reason that you would not ward level one? Because your trinket will come back at four minutes, right? Yeah. So if you have two trinkets at four minutes, your first trinket becomes useless. So you either use that trinket for lane or something to see his back timer. This is a very common one, right? Or mm -hmm. the better one in general is to like ward enemy raptors or ward enemy jungle at level one around minute 26. So if you don't get push anyway, something that you can do this game is you can run into enemy jungle at one minute 26. This is generally when bot lane is already in position to leash. They very rarely sit here until a minute 26, right? Put a ward down here or here, walk back to lane and you'll be there before the minions arrive, right? So this is, yep. this is the third thing. And then when I think about window usage, window usage is more about every time, okay, when do I have push? Or uh, uh, when is it my turn, right? It's your turn when Talia bases because he will have push. 
or you'll have you'll have a turn when you play the bounce wave and you can threaten her so generally after level three and like wave three you can like start to pressure her with your cues right so this is all like what i'm thinking about and then i'm also thinking about how my champion plays in the draft this is very important for assassins specifically because champions like ari silas really need to be able to play flank position and understand how to find pockets of vision right which is probably why you're struggling this is my guess so let's just have a look at your lane because i've had a rough idea on how, how how you think about the game and let's see how you play right so initially you afk um no uh, actually my jungle asked for me to, to not let him ward his camps uh, okay I remember that but what you should normally yeah. do here is if you in mid lane you can actually stop invades by yourself so if you sprint mid and then run here at the very start of the game you sprint mid if they're invading on bot side they're gonna show here when you're already here so they'll never kill you if they yeah, if, yeah, if they know. run through mid they'll you'll already see them mid so you can just back off so you can actually stop invades on your own if you didn't know um, no, he, he, he was afraid of the late, late, late like, yeah. oh shit, the late ward. Yeah, that's I mean, fine. He asked for help and I said, okay, fine, I can do it. But something I would have liked to see is, as I said, if you didn't see anyone here, I would have liked to see you walk board, check if anyone's coming and then walk into this bush. Because you can stop invades yeah. alone is what I'm saying, thinking about real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, I mean, this is fine. What you do is fine. Let's just see how you play level one. So mid lane is like really all about micro movements and like mini games. But it's also about wave management. So against Talia, Talia wants to like queue the front minions and what you want to do is make her trade HP, right? So imagine, would you prefer Talia to stand here or would you prefer Talia to stand here? If you want to like- Of course, if she stands like with the minions, I can queue her and push the wave. So it's better for me. So did you know if you order the right or left minion, you can make these melee minions come here? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. So that's like a really good tactic to do when you play Talia because you can drag the way. So when you play Syndra matchup, because you can drag the wave here, the caster will sit here, and Talia will have to walk up to a more forward position to hit your casters when she's pushing, in general. I see, I see. So that's something that you can think about, because you don't have push anywhere, right? Yeah, I usually do it like on, when I'm ranged matchups against melee, but I never did when I'm like ranged against ranged, never thought about it. Ranged range is really good to use as well, because you can tether the enemy. You have a better attack range than Talia, because Talia can't hit you through the minions. Yeah. So this is something to think about as well. Um, I would I would make sure that I'm throwing my cues off of your like her auto attack animation. So I'm mostly playing off her auto attack animation on the last hits, right? See, I think this cue is very early. Like I know it's a small detail, but like it's very important when it comes to trading stance and like trying to trade in general. If she auto attacks, she's gonna be locked in auto attack animation. So the way that Chovy would play nowadays, or like Knight would play, is they play the mini game. They think about Syndra Q, right? They fake the auto attack and they back off, right? But in Brazil, yeah, yeah. this guy's like trash. So he's going to just sit there and hit the fucking minion, you know? So you just press yeah. Q on top of him. I mean, I, I remember that time of the game. I just I just like threw this Q and I said like, what the fuck? Why did I do that? Yeah, so exactly. I think next time it, I, I will throw it better. I mean, when you were on your prime, you probably knew all this, but it's like you haven't, you haven't played, you know? So you did this yeah. here, right? You did this here. Yeah. This is essentially what you want to be doing. Um, and then what you do here is fine. You prep the wave, he wards second wave, very standard. I'd probably just do the same thing here. So do you like this forward position that you're taking? Um, I mean, he went toward, I got level two first, I think. I think it's a good trade. Well, first of all, let's just go back to what we talked about. Early levels, you don't get push. You still have your trinket. So your ward usage was not great. You missed this. You missed this window at 130. Then on the first wave, you trade it incorrectly. And on the second wave, you hit level two first. But what is your objective from here? Do you want to... Deny. I want to deny her this, this minion. Yeah. So I like this movement, but the best way to drop aggro is not to walk to your casters. It's actually to walk right side. So it's actually really good to sit on the open and pressure her like this. The reason is, if she throws Q at you, you take like 30 damage and you walk to the left and you take zero damage. And then she loses her ability to like push out basically. And then her Q will go on cooldown and then you can step. But if you step in between her casters, you take basically maximum damage and you can't drop aggro as much. Does that make sense? You take more damage basically. Yeah, yeah. So so here like your actual position is flawed. Um, your Q usage is flawed. And then from here, you kind of just let the, the wave push in. 
this is this is fine so let's have a look at your gold at four minutes okay i mean let's just see how you play your general training pattern is fine like you understand the matchup it's very clear like i can tell you were a control major in your pro play a player in your prime you know this is all great um technically briar could have been here like a minute ago so just be aware of that and then you know the cl the classic, right? Split the map in half, hug your ward side, never cross this line. Yeah? Yeah. You ward the top side. So I'm assuming you already do that. You do. And you have a bit more confidence because you see the, the Jarvan. So, okay, here's the thing. When here, like here, my uh, Senna is on the burst, so I'm trying to to get her, like I went to the op opposite side. So yes, she yes. Goes to Senna, you know? Yeah, I, I taught this the other day. So basically, for those of you guys that don't understand it, because there's obviously people watching on stream, right? I'll explain what you're doing here. Normally, if you ward here, you don't cross this middle line. But if you have a jungler or a support, what he's doing is called shepherding. If he walks to the right, Talia will want to feel like to walk to the left because he's in a losing matchup. So he wants to put Talia in a position where Senna can threaten her. That's essentially what you're doing, correct? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what he did here. So everything about his movement is fine. Um, and then you just take the 2v3, you get a free kill. Nice. Okay, so you don't have a kill. At 4 minutes 15 seconds, after this wave, you'll have 950 gold, right? Look, you missed some CS, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. So if you want 1100 gold, you need to take one more wave. So it's not 530 at all, right? So this is what we talked about in our initial structure, wave 7, 8. This is what I'm thinking about. I want to manage the wave so that I'm pushing around wave 7, 8, and I have enough HP to do so. So notice because I'm planning it really, really far ahead, I'm minimizing the amount of thinking I'm doing during the game. And I'm also planning ahead so I don't take bad trades. So I'm in a position to have a better first buy, right? This is the way that yeah. I want you to think about. Because right now what's happening is the results are decent. Not perfect, but decent. But it's instinctual, right? So if you're, not, if you're on tilt or if you forget or if you're tired, you're not going to be able to do the same thing every time. So you really want a system in which you think the same way. You go through a checklist and you're consistent. Right? Because solo queue is really all about consistency and mental, to be honest. Um, so you take this wave, you should take, you should hard push the next wave and look for a base. Right? 1100. So this is wave 8. Beautiful. So on champs like TF, you can actually use double Q at level 5 and insta base, and then you match TP. Pretty standard. Nice. So this is the wave you normally get level 6, correct? So here, yeah. I really like to play aggressively. I already have vision on the on my right side. I assume Bri used his turn uh, on top side. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, this vision is trash. Yeah, it is, it is pretty trash. I don't trash. know, but I don't know who put this word, but it's fucking trash. But but so, so okay, if it's trash, you can also ward for yourself. In general, yeah, yeah. I think Bri is path part to top, so his turn is always going to be bot side. So I actually like warding top side here instead of bot side anyway. And then hugging top side. And I want to take you, I want to see you take a really aggressive position. Because this matchup from level three onwards is all about like chunking him. And then at six, you have all in window. And Talia wants to clear the wave and move. That's kind of the thought process. Yeah. Um, I would work on my skill shot placement and my positioning. I would position to the left side right after TP, ward here. The bush is actually better against champs like Briar because you can actually jump over the wall. Um, and then I would, I would do the same thing. I would walk back and forth, tether on, on Talia Q. And play around Talia W because you outrange her and you can outspace her. Syndra's unique and Oriana's unique because you can... Okay, Oriana's unique because you can hit the wave while you poke them. And Syndra's unique because you can cast spells while you move, right? Whereas yeah. Talia actually on her initial Q timing has a cast time. So I would like sit on the left side, bait out her spells and look to land my Q QE. Whereas what I see right now is I see more playing to the wave and using my E to try to land a max range E. Whereas I'll just put my Q on top of her. I think that you straight up win the trade. Um, get level six first. She hits level six, you find a nice trade, fine. Okay, pretty good lane phase, man. Honestly, like not bad, not bad. Yeah, so, yeah. so what we'll do is we'll do an exercise. Um, the reason this is important is, as I said, it helps you plan ahead. But something else that it helps you do is if you have a really good idea on how a matchup should go, um, you can actually correctly determine when a mistake happens. You can find more mistakes from the enemy and you can even like adjust your strategy if you realize it's not working. Yeah. Let's do the same exercise where 
uh, you just go over the draft and you think about how the draft should go and how you should play. And yeah, let's go. Let's go with that, right? Yeah. Same idea. Uh, lane first. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a, the the idea behind the lane is the same. Like get your lost chapter, right? Yeah. But it's a bit harder to do on this matchup because Orianna can poke me down pretty easily. Uh, but I can win level one now. Mm -hmm. Ari has a pretty strong level one. Mm -hmm. So if I can if I can bait her Q, I can get like I can get her to not touch the wave and either he trades HP or he gives me the push. So level one I can do that so I can control the lane or at least get an HP advantage. And after that most of the lane is just like baiting out her Q and have HP and get the lane push because otherwise I get like poked down. And you start W? Yeah, I start W. Yeah, and um, what what wave do you want to base, and what do you like? What's your game plan here? I think my game plan is almost the same as Syndra the last game. Like, yeah, seven, eight wave, get last chapter if I farm correctly, and after that lane becomes so much easier. And tell me about what you think about your draft in general, and what your role is in the game. Um, so we have like a bear ganking jungler early game, mm -hmm. but Hecarim is probably looking to to scale. And they have Orianna, which is like, she's not as strong as me into first item after six. Mm -hmm. So I have to use my, my lane advantage to help out Viego and try to keep Orianna from kind of like out of playing the game, you know? We yeah. have Bard, so it's kind of hard for her after six to, to step out and get the wave. So I need to use that into my advantage to, to try to, to play the map first. Okay, so I actually disagree. I think, um, I don't think that you can actually base for Lost Chapter. I think this matchup is heavily Orianna favored in lane. I think Ari is a piece of shit in lane. The way, that, the way that you have to change your mindset when you play Ari is, I'll make it very simple. Control mages are really, really fucking hard, but also really rewarding because of two reasons, right? One is you can push and be lane dominant, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can keep enemy under tower and maintain tempo on the map. You also scale well. Well, you also scale well generally. Um, but two, and this is kind of the challenging aspect: control mages have to play alone. They, I mean, the exception is Syndra because you have CC early levels. But when you think of Victor, Syndra, so when you think of Victor, Oriana, they're not champs that you play around. They're champs that you get vision for, and they have to play alone. So they have to maintain tempo, maintain push while absorbing pressure from enemy jungle. And that's the job of a control mage, right? So jungle should actually yep. not come mid if you have like Orianna. They should not. They should only come mid to like ward for you so you can play alone. And then while you push enemy, enemy assassin or whatever under tower, they should get a lead somewhere else. Whereas assassins, generally pieces of shit, you know? They're, yeah. they're, they're like really, really weak in lane. For example, Kiana, Ari, I mean, LeBlanc is, a, is an exception, but even LeBlanc, you lose push. Um, what's another one off the top of my head? Uh, Silas, great. Akali. Akali. They're all like so weak. Like anyone who's actually played an assassin will know what I'm talking about. There are some obviously exceptions to this. Obviously, if you're playing Silas into like TF, who's even a bigger piece of shit, right? Then it's fine. Yeah. But the, when you play Kiana, Ari, Silas, Akali into like Oriana, Victor, you actually want to like just FF. So, but they, what, what do they also have? Setup, right? Like Ari has, Ari, Ari, Silas have so much setup. So generally they are drafted for 2v2. Jungle needs to use a turn to come mid to help Ari. Like theoretically. Obviously, if you're like a much better player, you can fuck them alone, right? Because they're just bad. But normally, yeah. in my opinion, I think if Ari can base on Lost Chapter, it's highly illegal. I think Ari should never be able to base on Lost Chapter. I think he's almost always basing for Boots Dark Seal or Amp Tome. Dark Seal or Amp Tome Boots. Yeah, I agree. With um, you. I mean, it's because I'm playing against mostly bad players, so I yeah. try to, to yeah. kind of extend a bit, you know? Yeah. So, but I agree with you. Or, I shouldn't ever be able to to get a lot shatter. Yeah. And and Oriana should be the side that's pushing and pressuring and chunking Ari. It's just it's just normal because Oriana outranges. Oriana does more damage. Oriana outtrades, whereas Ari has set up in the form of a flash charm, right? Or E flash. 
or just charm in general if she missteps. Obviously, if Oriana just runs into your charm and then you like land full combo, it's fine. But that should not be possible to do because she should play behind minions, right? And yeah. she has a shield. So what should happen is on losing matchups, you need to trade HP for push, base, TP, trade HP for push, base, walk to lane. This is just this is your standard combo. This is how you avoid losing the lane too hard. Because if you push, they catch, right? They catch. Then you push again. They don't have the window to hit you. Whereas if you get pushed in and the minions are under the tower, you have to choose between gold, which is the minions, or your HP. You have to choose. And this is how you get solo killed, and this is how you get fucked under tower. This is how you get minus 50 CS. So if you see TF play good TF players, I don't mean the trash ones, or if you see good RA players, they'll trade HP for push and base twice normally. This is just very standard. There are some exceptions. Obviously, if you play TF into champs like Fizz, it's good to hold the wave on your side and hold ulti. But this is very specific to matchups. So here, like, W training is fine. And I think this is what you should do. But Oriana should almost always get push. Should almost always look to just Q through the minions and hit you. And even if he loses the trade, he should maintain push. So he can keep you under tower. I'm pretty sure, even as, like, a diamond player, I could play on 200 ping and get pushes Oriana. Just not because of your skill. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's just a champion, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like if you play Caitlyn into Malphite, you just have to flash. Like, what are you going to do, you know? But notice how he doesn't use spells at all. And then now you step. He should actually just trade onto you. He should already have push. He should already be first on the wave. He should rate yeah, six he, minions. Like, that's how you would play, use right? His Q. Yeah, he didn't use his skill. Yeah. So I just waited out. Yeah. And when he did, I went after him. But what you do here is really good, man. What you do is really good. This is just skill gap. You're just way better than him, you know? <laughs> like, this is not... Like, I, you're, you're probably playing not... Like, you should be a challenger player still, I'm guessing, if you play a bit. Um... But yeah, what you're doing is good. Trading HP for push. You use your window to ward. You should pop your potions. And then you just do the same thing. Nice. Good, 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 good. Very good. But normally, what did I say? If you lose push, what should you do? You should ward level one, right? Yeah. Normally, this is how you should play. Normally, RA side should ward level one. Jungle should be tracked through your first level one ward. And then your jungler should come mid one turn to help you push out and base. This is how it should go. But, yeah, um, it just doesn't yeah. happen in Brazil in solo kills, so you can't yeah, yeah. just play by yourself. So now you TP back. I mean, this is exactly what I said you would do. I mean, what you should do, and you actually did that, which is good. Um, nice flash. Nothing you can do. Wow, nice, nice. Okay, let's have a look at your mid-game, okay? So, so what okay. you want to do is everything that you can think about before the game, you should, like, plan ahead. So, for example, um, in this game, I think as Ari, it's really important to play on pockets of vision. Um, find windows where you can find flanks. And just find windows where you can get to the backline easier. So, in general, a cookie-cutter way of playing assassins is um, find a way to not show on vision. Slash play around enemy wards. Two, find flank position. Three, be annoying so they have to work, think about you during the team fight. So your carry can DPS, or they ignore you and you one-shot enemy AD. This should be the thought process. Pretty simple, yeah. right? So let's have a look at how you play the team fight. Ari is kind of king from level six. Um, yeah. Nice. So let's have a look at the next team fight. I mean, the game seems to be over from lane phase. Here, do you like the way that you position or play? Let's have a look. I mean, there was no wave, so kind of just went back and... What do you think about, like, fogging, just sitting in fog, or just waiting for next wave? Do you like showing here? Look. Dean, you knew I was there already. Mm -hmm. I went through the ward. So you knew so... this was warded? Yeah, so I tried to just get some chip damage. Nice. You clean up? Beautiful. Okay, you, you played this fight well. I think uh I think generally cool. Cool. I think the only things that you can learn at the moment are uh structure around your lane phase. Uh warding level one, right? And then... I usually ward level one to be honest, but recently mm -hmm. uh these few games I didn't. I don't know why. I was doing it a lot. Even the chat was just was asking me all the time why you're warding level one and stuff, you know? Ah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, just whenever you don't have push, it's good to ward level one. And then maybe like just yeah. a mini game in the in the lane, like positioning inside the lane. But to be honest, this is also a bit too low elo for you. I think if you, I think if, I don't think your master stuck. I think if you keep playing, you'll climb. Um, but you need to be consistent with the way that you you execute your lane phase, and then you'll kind of take another step up, right? And as for your like assassin play, I mean, I I will have to see more. But as for now, it seems fine. So yeah, I mean, it was fun to watch. I'd like to see um you know maybe in like a week or something just a quick follow-up to see where you are in terms of skill and in terms of like how yeah. you play if you keep playing what do you think about that yeah we can do it yeah and then we'll kind of go over the draft and kind of go over how you should think about the game um generally a good way to improve is if you set two or three goals for yourself so there's a thing called cognitive load theory um by mr john sweller so this is an Australian educational psychologist. He's really well known. Um, he's a professor at University of New South Wales. He has over 80 academic publications um, on psychology. And what he says when it comes to learning is that humans have what's called a, a limit in working memory. So this is not to be confused with cognitive workload. This is cognitive load theory in psychology. So you know how like your computer has RAM, right? Yeah. It's like the same thing. He basically says like your brain has a limited amount of working memory at, at one time. So you want to make the game or learning process as simple as possible. So one of the best ways to do that is set two or three micro goals for yourself that you want to work on every game and you'll improve way faster. Um, and they need to be simple and like easy to understand. So for example, making sure that you do the checklist, making sure that you ward level one, making sure that you're paying attention to your, your lane position. Are you mirroring or are you like, you know, uh, are, you, are you like fainting so that he throws his skills? And th there's another reason you do this. It's it's because of this, which is called like the sports science pyramid. It's like, uh, it's called the performance pyramid. Essentially, plays tend to be focused on these two, right? Results, performance, whether or not they're losing, whether or not they've played well. What you really want is like good in-game systems and a good review process. And you want to focus on the process of improvement. And the best way to do that is to set micro goals. So there's two reasons that you really set your goals. Um... This will help you improve a lot and this will help you also feel better because you, you don't just focus on the in-game elements. You focus on like little mini side quests and it feels like you won whether or not you won or lost. Yeah, makes sense. So that's kind of like yeah. what I'd like to see and where you would be in a, a week. That would be really frust That would be really fascinating to me. I think you'll improve a lot. Yeah, I'll try to, to put those those mechanisms in, yeah, I mean, uh, in at full speed, but uh, I haven't been able to play like a lot of games every yeah. day, but I'll try to get like two or three games a day and see what i can get i try to be more systematic with my lane phase yeah. that will be my goal and uh, i'll see you, i'll get you the feedback on how i feel about it can i ask you why do you play solo queue is it like do you want to come back to league or is it just for fun right now i kind of just challenge myself to get challenged again i i you will know? bet you my left nut if you do what i say you'll be like minimum 1k you'll 100 percent get chill because you already have the knowledge. Like, you know most of the stuff I'm talking about. Like, when I talk to yeah. some Brazilian challenger players, they don't know. They don't know. They, they actually don't know, you know? So you have, like, the veteranness. You're just a bit old. So your hands hands are maybe a bit rotten. But yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely use that use that goal-setting thing. Set, like, two or three goals, and, and you'll climb in no time, man. That's, that that yeah. would be the goal, to be honest. Yeah. I'll right. see. I'll see what I can do. Well, that's it for me. Um... Thanks, thanks for coming on. It was fun. Oh yes, sure it was. I hope the chat <laughs> liked it as well. I learned, I I learned a lot, or at least my thoughts were I could get in a more systematic way, which is always nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank thanks so much, man. Thanks so much. I thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. I cheers. Appreciate it.